everyone, Izzy here, back with another build video, and in this video I am going to show you how I made these Dragon Priest masks from Skyrim. Now, I had a few different ideas for how to make the master version of this mask, like I thought about sculpting the whole thing from clay, for example, but in the end I decided to make a foam mask with some foam clay around the sides for some of the more sculptural areas. I then moulded this foam mask in silicone and used the silicone mould to cast the final masks in resin, with a metallic powder over the top for a nice shiny finish. But first, let's get started with how I made the foam master mask. First, I grabbed this busted old head cast I always use for these projects and started sculpting on it with clay. This was to create the basic shape of the mask to then create a pattern. So I started by bulking out the entire thing and then refining and smoothing out the shape. I could then lay cling film over it and layer on masking tape. The masking tape gave me a surface to draw a pattern onto. Which I could then remove cut up into parts and transfer to 5mm foam. I traced each piece of the pattern twice, flipping each pattern piece over to draw its opposite side. I cut each piece out and then started gluing them together. First I stuck together the darts and then each individual piece of the mask's base shape. I then heat formed it to help it hold its shape. Then I started layering up the details on the mask, first with the forehead pieces in 3mm foam, and a piece over the mouth area so it wouldn't have a showing seam line. Then I traced and cut out the next layer of the face. Before cutting it free, I cut out beveled discs around the eyes and sanded them down. I then glued the pieces of this layer together and glued them onto the base mask. I then had to make another third layer to the face. This one I cut from thinner 3mm foam. I cut trenches into the backs of the cheeks on this layer, which I filled with hot glue and pressed together to form a raised ridge. Then this layer got glued down onto the mask as well. along with a piece of 3mm foam to cover the chin. Next, I used foam clay to enhance the shapes I'd already created in foam and give the whole mask a continuous, smooth finish. Because foam clay sets to the consistency of foam, I could then sand each of these areas down, defining their shape and making sure they all fully blended in with one another. Next, I used foam spheres to create the eyes. I cut the spheres down into semicircles and shaped them at the back so I could just glue them down onto the eye holes. With the mask's build done, I coated it in a layer of black primer, which allowed me to see the whole thing as a unified colour. This makes it easier to spot any issues before sealing it. When I was happy, I used a bunch of layers of Mod Podge to seal the mask properly. This gave it a smooth, hard coating over its surface, which was important as I knew I would be moulding it in silicone. Next, I could begin prepping to mould the mask. I started by placing the mask onto a face cast I had sculpted over to create a base for it to sit on. 
Then I sculpted around the mask to create a smooth wall of clay that it was flush to. Then I cut up a bunch of my scrap foam to create a floor for the mould. Sculpting this entirely from clay would have used way more clay than I had and is also just kind of a waste, so I bulked it up in foam first. When I had bulked it up enough, I added a layer of clay on top to create a smooth surface all around the mask. With that done, I started making a wall around the mould. For this, I used foam board, again using some scraps I had lying around. I cut pieces of foam board and with a small gap around the mask, stuck them into the clay and hot glued them together to form a wall all around it. And then I sprayed the mask and the mould wall with mould release. I made this mould using silicone, which comes in two parts that you mix together. First, I brushed the silicone onto the mask, being sure to get it into every detail and crevice. I then poured the rest of the mixed silicone onto the mask to create the mold. Because of the mask's shape being so domed, I spent some time pushing silicone up from the sides and onto the top of the mask as it set. I also ended up using two different silicones to get enough coverage, which happened to be two different colours, but that doesn't really matter as silicone will just stick to itself if you don't put any mould release on it and it will all become one block once it's set. When the silicone mould was fully set, I sprayed more mould release on it, and then mixed together some plaster to form a mould jacket, although in this case it kind of ended up being a mould tray. This would be a hard surface for the silicone to sit in and stop it from potentially warping while the resin is setting inside it. Once the plaster was also set, I began demolding the entire thing, removing the foam board walls, the face cast, the clay, and finally the foam mask itself to reveal the silicone mold. Then I cleaned up the mold and it was finally ready for casting some finished masks. As usual when working with resin and metal powders, I wear an appropriate respirator, eye protection and gloves, and everyone else should too. For the first mask, I used bronze powder, this is the cold casting part of the process. I pour metal powder into the mold and move it around so it coats the entire surface of the mold. This will cling to the resin as it sets and cover the surface of the finished product. It also acts as a mold release, so I don't need to add any other kind of mold release to the mold right now. Like silicone, resin comes in two parts that need to be mixed together. I'm also using a black pigment to dye the resin so that the surface beneath the metal coating is dark rather than white or clear. Pour out the A part and the B part of the resin, and mix the black pigment into the B part, before mixing them together and stirring thoroughly. I then gently pour the resin into the mould so as not to displace any of the metal powder, and move and tilt the mould around to coat the entire mould in a layer of the resin. I pour multiple layers of resin into the mould, building up each layer until I'm happy with it. When it's finally set, I can then demould the resin mask. As you can see, the surface is coated in the metal powder, though right now it isn't very shiny. I clean up the edges of the mask. and then use metal wool to buff the surface, which brings out the shine of the metal powder. Of course, silly me, I posted a photo of the mask before I had buffed it, so now I know that pre-buffed bronze powder looks a lot like chocolate, as everyone on Twitter told me many, many, many times. <laughs> For the second mask, I repeated the same process again, but this time I used a steel grey powder. There are a ton of these masks in Skyrim that come in all different colours and finishes, so basically any metal powder I use is accurate to one of the masks. Just like with the first mask, I poured dyed resin into the mould, swished it around, and added lots and lots of layers in the same way. And then when it was set, I demoulded it. Despite this powder being called steel grey, the finish on this mask still had kind of a warm brown tone to it, but it was a lot shinier and more mottled than the first powder I used. 
and it definitely looks a lot less like chocolate. I think overall I prefer the finish on the second mask, but I'm really happy with how both of them turned out. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. I am so sorry that this one took so long to finish. Life has just been completely getting in the way of me finishing either this project or the video or any other video for a really long time, but we finally got there and I'm really happy with how these masks turned out. As always, if you want to see more cosplay and crafting videos from me, then subscribe to my channel. You could also leave a like and a comment down below to help with that mean old algorithm. And you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at EvilCleverDog for cosplay and crafting updates. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.